The topic of this video is colony assessment, which is something that personally I think um, all beekeepers should do. Uh, even if they're only just beginners or um, long-term beekeepers, it doesn't matter whether they've got um, two colonies or, or 100. Um, because I think a colony assessment is really important because we need bees that we're happy with. Uh, we need bees that uh, suit our environment, the locality. Um, we need bees that are pleasant to handle. And although you may not think you're a bee breeder, in fact, everybody who keeps bees and does swarm, swarm control in one way or another is a bee breeder. Because very often you're put in a situation where you uh, need to decide uh, whether you keep queen cell from a particular colony or not. And in some instances, perhaps two colonies are preparing to swarm. If one you like a lot better than uh, the other, then you can use the queen cells from that one rather than uh, just the one from the colony. So even a th simple thing uh, like an artificial swarm, um, if you've got two colonies that um, that you're doing the same um, uh, same operation on, you can use the queen cells from the um, uh, 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 from the best one, the one one, one that you um, one that you want. Um, as an experienced beekeeper, I'm probably assessing a colony all the time. I may not be recording it. Uh, I do. There's some things I record. I record uh, for my own bees, temper, uh, calmness on the comb, and whether I am li likely to um, uh, uh, to raise queens or whether I'm, I want to raise queens from that particular colony uh, or not. They're all on my record sheet, um, and it's just a simple thing to to record. I think beekeepers are probably recording. Uh, things all the time. It, it, it's just that they may not be doing it in an organised way. They might perhaps just keep it in their head. If they've only got three colonies at the bottom of the garden, they might think, mm, that one on the end, they're a bit spiky. Um, or the one in the middle, uh, they're, they're a nice calm colony. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to open this colony up, um, have a look at it, explain a few things, and um, and then we'll put this video together from snippets we've got from uh, other uh, other areas. We'll put it together and we'll try and explain things uh, for you. Now, when you're assessing a colony, um, you I think it's best best if the same person assesses colony uh, all the colonies, preferably on the same day. So perhaps if it's a a bee breeding group or local beekeeping association. Um, if you want to assess your colonies, uh, one person assess them, all of them this time, somebody else the next time, perhaps somebody else the time after that. Because then what you do is you take the human element out of it. It may just be that a simple thing that one person gives a bit more smoke or a bit less smoke than somebody else. Now that could affect the um, uh, the movement of the bees on the comb. If somebody gives more smoke than they should, then you expect the bees to um, uh, uh, to move around. You've also got to take into account any uh, management um, uh, techniques that you've done in the meantime. So if you've done something like you you've let's say moved a colony away to to uh, lose the flying bees, uh, there isn't much point assessing that colony because um, all the flying bees are gone um, and you just got adult bees there and adult bees are very much sort of uh, calmer than um, uh, than the than the flying bees also um, you may find that if you've um, added a comb of uh, a brood from somewhere else and you perhaps want to um, uh, to assess the colour of, of a colony, perhaps um, find out if a queen has uh, mated with um, uh, all sorts of drones. Uh, if you put, let's say, um, a frame of brood from another colony with a uh, with a different colour of bees in, then un until they all die off, then you're going to uh, have a bit of a, um, a a bit of a false situation. So let's pitch into this colony and um, uh, see what we can find. And I'll try to explain things as I go. 
uh, when you're assessing a colony, uh, don't start banging about uh, beforehand, like taking rocks off roofs and throwing them on the, on, on, on the ground, banging things down on the roof, uh, or, or even taking the, the roof off. Give the bees a chance. What you're doing is assessing the bees, uh, not your bad beekeeping. So all I do is just a little bit of smoke in the entrance, take the uh, roof off, Okay, all the bees in this colony should have come from this queen. Okay. Well, first uh, thing is uh, uh, for me, they're actually... Um, uh, rather yellow, which personally I don't particularly uh, like because that tends to suggest that the uh, queen is prolific and I want to keep uh, bees on a single brood chamber, not a double brood chamber. So immediately that's what, um, that's the, that's what I'm looking at. So um, queen isn't on there. They seem quite calm. Now, I put um, a drone comb in many of my colonies. In a natural uh, nest, uh, the drone is on the uh, uh, periphery and about 10 to 15 percent area wise. That's my estimation. So I put one drone comb uh, on the edge of the uh, of the box because I'm, I'm effectively giving the bees what they want. So these sing quite quiet so. um, with castellated spaces it's often said that you can't get the frames out without rolling bees well the reason for that is that um, uh, people don't know how to how to create space so they'll probably um just just take one of these frames out and that will that will roll the bees because if you look along the top there um you'll see that it's um uh the gap is wavy it's fairly constant between the two frames but it's but it's wavy like that and of course it's the same the other way as well so if you take the frame out uh the gap gets wider then narrow you pinch bees and uh you you could uh, could could damage the queen so this is a technique for creating space so let's say if i want to take that frame out all i do is just go two frames away lift it out of the uh, slot push it away from me until i feel resistance do the same with the next comb and that should create enough space to get that frame out see and if i then move it backwards and forwards like that i can feel if it's um if it's tightening up uh, so there's a um the, there's a drone comb um pretty poor foundation i don't think the bees will make a good job of building that out but um it's too late this year to worry about that um yes they are quite calm now it's uh it's the third of august normally i will put that frame down at the front of the hive um, but i'm not going to because of the uh, possibility of starting robbing so i'll put that back in bring it back to me and rest it on the lugs that then leaves leaves plenty of space to get that frame out right uh, these bees are um, very calm. Um, they're, they're, one of the um, benefits, I think, of not having gloves is uh, um, and, and no bee suit is I, I've, I, I get a feel for the colony. I seem to be part of it. 
And to me, there's absolutely no vibrancy to this colony uh, at all. It's just there. Um, and um, there doesn't seem to be uh, too much sort of character to it or anything like that. Uh, now, before I go much further, I'm, I'm going to check the um, uh, the brood for possibility of um, American fowl brood. I haven't got a problem uh, there. Now, they are very calm. And there is a... You can't fault, can't fault them on that. They're not flighty. They are um, calm on the comb. Take my hand, rub that over there like that. They're not coming up hitting my hand. No, uh, no, uh, no problem at all. Um, you notice I looked at the dark side of the comb first. Now I've got some brood that I can check. I'll just see if the queen's on there. Um, I'll just check. Well, on the 20th of 7th, she was um, uh, uh, marked. So um, I can't see can't see the queen on there. So what I'm going to do is shake it. And I like to shake across the, the, uh, the box like that. Because if the queen is, is on the comb, then um, uh, I've, I've got the longest area. So just shake to get rid of um, the bees. And the brood here all looks pretty good to me. Um, there isn't a problem. So as far as I'm concerned, for the rest of the the rest of the um, colony, I'm not going to worry about AFB or EFB. I know there's a view that um, you only check at the beginning and the end of the season, but um, I know that um, uh, certainly EFB can come in in that time. Right. If you raise queens from this uh, colony, you've got quite a mix of, of, of colours here. Uh, you've got yellowish ones right next to uh, dark ones. So if you raise uh, queens, you get um, uh, quite a mixture. Um, you might get some that are um, better tempered than others. Uh, you might get some that are much more prolific than others. Um, really don't know. If this is all you've got, then uh, that's all you can um, uh, you can raise queens from. Um, but personally, I would requeen this colony uh, fairly quickly because I don't think it's going to be suiting my system of management. And I do wonder a little bit about um, about the um, uh, the hardiness of them. They just uh, I I never ever see bees in a wild colony that are colours like this. Never. Or, or not if they've been there uh, over, uh, certainly over winter, so reasonable time. Ne ne never see bees as, you, as, as, you know, this type, greyish, greyish yellow ones. Right, so um, we've seen the Queen. Um, I think in August, Um, with this amount of brood, I think we can say this colony is going to be, or this queen is going to be um, quite uh, uh, quite prolific. With my own bees um, in early August, I shouldn't, certainly wouldn't wouldn't like to see too many frames like that. I mean that that's okay. The odd, the odd one's okay. Right. So that is. Basically, my assessment of uh, of that colony. If that's all you've got, that's all you can um, either raise queens from, or uh, when you when you're doing swarm control, um, you use the queen cells or not, because all beekeepers are well, apart from those that just replace their queens and that's it. They're all um, to a degree, queen breeders, yeah, that's... Okay.
I think probably that um, that Queen's uh, problem might just be what she mated with. So perhaps the drones might be okay. Uh, drones is another thing you need to um, uh, uh, take into account um, because if, if, if the Queen has come from good stock herself, even if perhaps she's mismated, so you do get a, a mixture of um, uh, worker bees in the colony, if, if the Queen's come from good stock, uh, the drones should be okay. So you can keep a queen like that uh, in a colony, but don't, but don't, uh, but don't raise queens from her.